Hello, my name is Johnny Barfield with Cobb County Senior Services, and I'm here to talk to you today about cutting the cable cord. Now, a couple of disclaimers before I get started. The first being that I'm with Cobb County Senior Services, like I just said, so you know I'm not representing any company. I'm not trying to sell you on anything. I'm just here to impart information. Uh, the second being that I'm not an expert in cord cutting. I don't really think there are any experts in cord cutting. Uh, this presentation is really just based upon my own research into the subject and my own experiences um, having cut um, my you know, ties with the cable companies. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first big question is what is cord cutting? Cord cutting is the practice of canceling a cable television subscription and using an alternate internet-based or over-the-air service for your television. Um, it's also known as streaming. You'll hear me say that, that word a whole lot. Um, it can drastically cut the cost of your television viewing, but if you're not careful, it can also get more expensive. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, there are a lot of different options where you can watch TV without the high cost of a cable television subscription. Um, but there's likely no single alternative that's going to meet all your needs. You're going to need to have a couple of services, you know, if you're wanting to, you know, get the television content you want. All right, let's go over a couple of myths about cord cutting. Uh, the first one is if I cut the cord, I have to give up live television. Um, now, this is uh, false. You can have live television, including all the major broadcast channels, local news, and sports over the air for free. Um, there are also several streaming options that allow you to view live television, um, you know, over the internet. And so we're going to go over those um, services. Uh, myth number two, if I cut the cord, I have to stream everything from the internet. Um, that is not completely true. There, uh, you know, you can see if 47 of the top 50 TV shows are available with a television antenna for free over the air, just like they've always been, just like, you know, used to have the rabbit ears, um, you know, that's, that's still available. ABC, NBC, Fox, CBS, they are all still over the air right now, um, you know, free to get with an antenna. Myth number three, if I cut the cord, I have to give up my cable shows. Um, that's absolutely not the case. There are a lot of different options um, you can have to watch your cable shows, um, whether it be on demand or live. Again, without the cost of that cable television subscription. All right, so there are a number of reasons to cut the cord, and I think the biggest reason is the cost. So people do it to save money. Uh, this is just an example from you know a couple of years ago. Uh, the average uh, cable bill um, yearly is uh, one thousand two hundred thirty-six dollars, while a year of Netflix, Hulu, and Sling TV, three different streaming apps their subscription for the entire year would be $432 combined. Um, the average cable television subscriber pays for 189 channels, but they only watch 17 of those channels regularly. So that can be very frustrating to a person, you know, when you're paying that much to the cable company, but you're not watching, you know, all the stuff that you're paying for. Um, freedom is another big reason people cut the cable cord. Uh, there's no long-term contracts with these streaming services. It's very easy to join. It's very easy to get out. You're not going to spend, you know, hours on, you know, with customer service trying to, you know, drop Netflix. If you join up with Netflix, let's just say, it takes, you know, less than five minutes to go on their website and cancel the service if you're unhappy with them. You know, as opposed to, I don't know, like a Comcast or a Direct TV, AT and T, where they're going to, you know, leave you on the phone for 45 minutes. You're going to have to deal with some sort of high-pressure salesman. You don't have to do that with these streaming services. It's very simple to join, very simple to uh, get out of it. Um, let's see. Um, another one is kind of more of a holistic kind of thing is watching TV with a purpose. Um, you, Especially me, I find that when I cut the cable cord, I spend less time watching TV. Um, a lot of times when you have cable TV, you just kind of leave the TV on and the TV is kind of just you're just kind of along for the ride. But when you're streaming, a lot of the times you you really just have to kind of decide, okay, I want to sit down and I want to watch this show. And when that show is over, you have to make a decision. Do I want to go to something else to watch 
Or do I want to go read a book? Do I want to go I don't know, do some gardening? Do I want to go take a walk? You, you find yourself watching uh, a lot less TV, and that's always a good thing. Um, less commercials. Uh, notice I didn't say no commercials. Um, there are some services which will have commercials on there, but for most of your on-demand viewing, you're not going to have any commercials. And it's easy to try. Um, a lot of these services have, you know, they're free for, you know, a month if you want to try it out before you actually start paying for it. Um, so, you know, it's very easy to get into. Reasons not to cut the cord. It is not for everybody. You have to be an educated consumer. Um, when you pay, you know, let's say Comcast for your cable bill, you're getting their whole package of content. You don't have to think about it. You just have to know, okay, I want to watch this show. I know it's on this channel. I'll go to that channel because I'm paying Comcast for that channel. Very simple. Um, with streaming, you have to know what shows you want to watch and where to get them. Because this show, you know, I don't know, let's say Breaking Bad, if you have cable, you know, Breaking Bad is, was on AMC. And that's how you get it. But with um, streaming, if you want to watch Breaking Bad, you have to know how to find which streaming service it is on because it could be on a couple of different ones. And you got you to know how to look for things. Um, upfront cost. Uh, this is pretty minuscule, the upfront cost. Obviously, you're going to be paying a subscription to the streaming apps like Netflix, a monthly subscription. But you'll also need a device of some sort to get that app onto your television. Um, that's either a smart TV, which you might already have. Um, it could be a Roku. It could be an Amazon Fire device. Uh, you know, you have to have that. But that's pretty small. Um, you're not looking at usually more than uh, you know, somewhere between $30, $40 for kind of a basic streaming device. A delayed access. Um, depending upon the uh, services that you choose, this might not even be an issue. But in the cases of some of them, like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, um, when it's on demand, you might have to wait. Um, in the instance of Hulu, you might have to wait till the next day. If you use Netflix, you might have to wait an entire year to see something that people are seeing live right now. So, you know, if that's something you're okay with, you have to think, am I okay with delayed access? But if you're not okay with it, there's still a lot of options that will allow you to watch them live without that high cost of the, uh, the cable company. All right, so what do you need to cut the cable cord? First off, you're going to need high-speed internet access. Um, this is a must because you're going to be getting your television service over the internet. A streaming device. Uh, this is a thing like a Roku. It's kind of like your cable box. This is what's going to plug into your TV. It's going to connect to the internet and allow you to access the apps that you have um, a subscription to. Then you have the streaming services. So you're going to need a couple of subscriptions. So these are things like you know a monthly subscription to Netflix or to Hulu or to Sling TV, something like that. And then lastly, I also put on the uh, digital antenna. Um, this is not for everybody. And it kind of depends upon what services you need um, or you want, whether you actually need a digital antenna at all. A uh, digital antenna, again, allows you to watch things over the air. These are the major broadcast channels like ABC, NBC, Fox, CBS, PBS, things that stream, or not stream, but things that are just broadcast over the air for everybody for free. Um, the benefits of having an antenna, they're pretty low cost, especially if you, you know, don't have any reception problems. You can get these you know, for like $20 at Walmart, and they're very easy to install. And you know, if your internet goes out, if, you know, if anything happens to your internet, you're able to continue to watch at least the broadcast channels over the air. Uh, these are your local channels. So we'll talk a little bit about the uh, digital antenna as well. And you can kind of decide for yourself whether that's something you feel like you need. All right, so we're going to start with the digital antenna, just to get that out of the way. Um, all local stations are free over the air in HD. Um, like I said, just, just like it used to be, you know, with the rabbit ears, except it's a little bit more uh, digital now. But uh, those, those stations are still all there. 
Um, you do not have to pay for them as long as you have that antenna and good reception. So again, no need for internet connection. Um, it has a couple of advantages having the antenna, like I mentioned. If you know your internet goes out for any reason, if there's a storm or you just you know just have a bad connection and it goes out every once in a while, you don't have to depend upon that. You can always switch over to your antenna and watch those local channels. Also, it avoids the use of bandwidth. If you have a problem with uh, some sort of data cap with your internet company and um, that's an issue for you, and you watch a lot of local stuff, you can save that internet bandwidth for other things. So you can watch those local channels over the air for free and then save that bandwidth, your internet connection, for other things. Again, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, the CW, and most importantly, PBS. Um, PBS is, they're, they're making some progress, but still it's a little bit of a, a weird situation getting PBS through any streaming app um, just because there are so many different copyright issues with what PBS does. It's hard for these streaming applications to get PBS. So if PBS is important to you and seeing your local PBS station, um, then I would definitely recommend getting that antenna. All right, again, local news, sports, all that's included over the air for free. Um, but you must have a, a digital antenna to get them. Um, there are two different types. There's an indoor antenna. Uh, this is very easy to install. You just plug it up to your TV. It's basically like a, a piece of paper. It looks like a clear piece of paper, and you can just put it on your window, and you'll get all those uh, channels. But uh, you can have a limited reception with this. If you're like in a heavily wooded area, if you're you know kind of like at the base of Kennesaw Mountain, you might have a problem with reception if you have just the basic indoor normal antenna. If that is the case, then I would recommend an outdoor antenna. Um, caveat to this, they're a little bit more expensive, and they might require professional installation, especially if you're wanting to put it on top of your roof. Um, you're going to get more channels than you would with the indoor antenna and a better reception. Now, if you are curious on um, what stations you would get, because there's more stations than just the ones I have listed up there, um, you can go to antennaweb.org, and let me take you to that real fast. Antennaweb. And what this is the main page when you pull up antennaweb.org. And what you can do is enter your address or your zip code, and it'll tell you what stations you can expect to get. And you also notice right below the little search bar here, uh, you have a little checkbox where you can put antenna will be installed 30 feet, feet or more above ground level. So if you're going for one of the um, outdoor antennas, um, you can check that and see that you'll get even more channels. But we'll hit go, and I'll give it a second to compile the list. And scrolling down here, it shows you all the stations that you're likely to get with an antenna. So obviously you see the big ones. You got NBC, the CW, ABC, PBS, CBS, Fox, and a, you know, a bunch of other ones too. Ion TV, I know that's pretty popular too. Uh, so that's all you can get with um, antenna in this particular area. But that's just some good information to have. All right. Now, let's go back through here. Okay. Uh, oops. All right. Well, I was trying to get to that one little thing, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, you know, most antennas, they can be anywhere between $30 and $40 just starting out. You can get them anywhere, Walmart, Best Buy, Target, you know, any kind of major retailer you can get it from. Uh, moving along, we go to high-speed internet. Uh, this is definitely a must for streaming. Um, I, you know, I've taught this class a number of years, and I don't think anybody has dial-up anymore. So um, this is not something I want you to stress out a lot about. You more than likely have what you need um, as far as your internet is concerned. But it's always good to have the knowledge in case you run into any um, connection issues. All right. Like I said, fast and reliable internet is a must for streaming. But don't sweat it too much. The average broadband internet package will meet your needs. Um, but the way that we measure your internet connection is uh, something we call bandwidth, which is measured in megabytes per second. It's basically the amount of data 
that your, you know, your, your router, your, your internet device is um, getting from your uh, internet company. Um, Netflix reports that it takes five megabytes per second to stream a program. So that's not a lot of megabytes per second to stream a program. But you also have to keep a number of things in mind. Um, you know, how many devices are actually streaming a program. So if you have somebody upstairs streaming one program, you have somebody downstairs streaming another program, are they going to, you know, that's, that's 10 megabytes per second right there. Next up, um, you know, you're not, it's usually not the only thing happening is streaming a program. You might be, you might be, you know, checking your email. You might be, somebody might be watching a video on YouTube. Somebody might just be, you know, going on Amazon.com. There's more uh, going on in your internet than just streaming the program, obviously. So, 20 megabytes per second is generally kind of the rule of thumb as what you want to be able to um, kind of have a normal streaming lifestyle. If you want to be able to stream a couple of shows and a couple of different TVs and still be able to use, you know, some regular internet usage. But how do you do that? How do you measure this? How do you find out what you actually have? Um, go to speedtest.net. And again, we'll go ahead and go to that. Um, so go to speedtest.net. It's a very simple website to use. See this little go button? Just hit go. And that will start measuring the amount of megabytes per second you're getting. Now it's going to measure two different things you'll see above that circle there, download and upload. You're really only consider, um, only worried about the download speed. Don't, don't worry about the upload speed too much. So right now where I am in the Senior Center, um, we are uh, downloading at 43 megabytes per second, which is you know, excellent for streaming. We didn't used to have that here. It used to be, I think the last time I taught this class it was three. We basically got um, an upgrade recently. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, so obviously here, I, you know, I have everything I need. Um, so just, you know, do this at your home, especially if you're noticing you're having you know, any kind of issues connecting to the internet in general, especially when it comes to um, viewing video, when it comes to buffering, if you notice a buffering issue. Go to speedtest.net and see what you're actually getting from your internet provider. And if it's, you know, significantly less, if you're having issues, then give them a call and say, this is what I'm measuring. Um, why is this happening? So uh, that's a good resource to have. Okay. And lastly, a wired connection is best, but wireless works just fine. Um, kind of like I started this section of the presentation with, uh, don't sweat the internet too much. You might hear that, oh, well, it would be better if I could, you know, plug up my internet directly into my streaming device or my TV. Um, but, I mean, technically, that's true. It's better to hook it up. But I have never done that. I've always, you know, connected my device wirelessly to our, um, our internet. And it has literally never been an issue doing it wirelessly. All right, streaming services. So these are the things like Netflix, Prime, Hulu, Sling TV. These are what you're going to be paying your subscription to. Um, and there are a lot of different options. There is literally no way I could go. The market is so saturated right now with these things. Um, I'm just going to be going over the major heavy hitters. That's um, going to give you the most bang for your buck. Um, so the first off. We have Netflix. Netflix is the granddaddy of them all. I don't think any, uh, you know, cord cutting lifestyle is really complete without Netflix at this moment in time. They really have the mo the biggest catalog, the most content, uh, one of the best prices for especially for what they are offering. Um, it's kind of the the bedrock of any streaming lifestyle. All right. So their packages range between $9 and to $16 a month, depending upon the package. Uh, it's important to know that you're receiving the exact same content, no matter whether you pay the $9 or you pay the $16. If you pay $16, you're not going to get more TV shows, more movies than the person who pays the $9. 
The differences in the packages have to do with, uh, A, the um, type of, the quality of the data. So, you know, if you are a big, like a 4K person, if you want, you know, more than just regular HD, you want to do 4K, you might need to go up to the higher packages. Um, but also, the more important thing to know, uh, the difference in the packages, is the amount of devices that can be streaming from this account at one time. So, um, the lowest package, you can have one screen watching Netflix from this account at one time. But say you wanted to share it with somebody. Say, uh, I mean, this is what most people do. You share your logins with other people. You share it with your family. You share it with your friends. So you're all kind of going off the same Netflix thing. So, uh, for instance, um, with my family, we have six people on the same account. And so obviously it can happen where multiple of us are going to be watching Netflix at one time you know, in different parts of the county. So, you know, we pay for a little bit of a higher price just to make sure that we can watch it on multiple TVs. And that's something to keep in mind just overall when we're talking about streaming um, services is that sharing your um, passwords is completely, you know, it's, you're not cheating the system. You're, it's, it's legal. Um, it's ethical. It's what they expect you to do. And it's another great way to uh, save money. You can have one of your friends, you know, is paying the Netflix subscription. One of your friends is paying the Hulu subscription. One of your friends is paying, you know, the YouTube TV subscription. And you all can kind of piggyback off each other, saving money. Uh, but going back to Netflix, um, they are very big about original programming right now. Um, they're, they're probably, when you hear about TV shows that you can only get through streaming, it's usually Netflix that has these, these big shows like, I don't know, Stranger Things. You can't get that anywhere but Netflix. And it's one of the most popular shows in the world right now. Um, so they, they put a lot of money into original programming, especially because so many places are doing streaming now. Uh, it used to be everything went to Netflix. Every TV show, every movie eventually went to Netflix. But once they saw how much money Netflix started making from this, all these companies decided, no, I want, you know, I'm not going to sell my TV show to Netflix. I'm going to, you know, save that for my own streaming service. So um, Netflix has put a lot of money into original programming to kind of make a name for themselves beyond just being a place to watch other people's shows. All right. But like I said, they currently have the largest catalog still, even though we have all these services, they're still the number one. Um, service that you're gonna you're gonna need. Um, a lot of older television shows they usually run about a season behind. Kind of like the talk before, you're gonna have to be willing to wait. If Netflix is your go-to for most of your TV viewing, you're gonna have to wait to see what people might be watching now. You're gonna have to wait, you know, about a season of that show uh, to actually be able to watch it on Netflix. Um, Older movies, again, they're usually about a year behind what's out in theaters. They do have some newer, but in most cases, it's going to be um, older stuff. Next up, we have Hulu. Hulu has a couple of different options. Uh, the first up um, is, you know, very reasonably priced, $6 a month. Um, this includes all of their on-demand programming with limited commercials. Um, now, when I talk about the limited commercials, I will say this caveat, um, the commercials can get really annoying. Um, I know the commercials are annoying in general, but when you are watching on Hulu, a lot of the times when you come up to a commercial break, you're watching the same commercial you watched at the last commercial break. Um, it can be pretty annoying. So, you know, I'd still give it $6 a try. But, you know, $12 for no commercials um, is, I, I think, worth it. But uh, it's kind of up to you. Um, they also have another uh, kind of hybrid programs, um, a $54 and a $61 option. Um, the uh, $54 option includes their basic limited commercial on-demand package, but also includes live television as well. So the cool thing about that is you get all of their on-demand stuff, 
but you can watch TV live just like you would if you had that cable subscription. Um, now, you know, you got to make sure that the channels that you want are part of their package, but you wouldn't have to give up that live programming that you're used to, and it's very reasonably priced. Um, they also have the premium option for $61, which includes the no commercial option along with their live TV. Um, they were created kind of a, a partnership between all the major broadcast stations. So that's kind of where their strengths lie. Um, ABC, Fox, NBC, all are heavily represented in their on-demand programming. And also some select CBS shows. CBS has kind of gone off on their own right now, so you don't see as much CBS on Hulu anymore. Um, most shows that you watch live on Hulu are available the next day to watch on demand. They have a small amount of movies on there, but you're not getting Hulu for movies. You're getting it for their TV programming. Um, again, they're, they have a lot of a backlog of ABC, Fox, NBC shows that you can choose from and watch on demand. Um, it's a good service, especially if you know those major broadcast channels are the places you like to be. Those are the shows you want to watch. Hulu is kind of a must, especially if you're um, a little bit scared about giving up live TV. Um, you can still get that um, live TV option for the $54 a month, and you might go, well, that doesn't sound all that much less than what I pay for cable. But the question you have to ask yourself is, you know, am I okay doing that because I don't have that contract? This is paid month by month, and just like Netflix – you can cancel this as soon as you are unhappy with it. You don't have to call customer service. You just go to their website and cancel it. And that's something I want you to keep in mind with all of these live streaming options. Um, the prices might not look that different from the cable company. Some of them are significantly lower. Some of them might even be more. But you are not tied to anybody. If you're unhappy with their service, you can cancel it that day painlessly. Um, another question to ask yourself is if you have the antenna, is one of these really worth it to you? Um, because since I said their strength is the ABC, Fox, NBC kind of thing, you can get all those channels over the air, over your um, antenna. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind when you're looking into Hulu. All right, next up is Prime. Uh, a lot of people already have Prime because so many people shop on Amazon and want to get that two, um, that free two-day shipping. Um, so uh, included with Prime, it's free with your Prime membership. Uh, you can either pay the $119 a year, or if you'd uh, rather not be tied to it for a year, you can do the monthly plan of $13 a month. And this one is extremely easy to try. Um, I don't currently have Prime myself. Uh, but I know every time I order something from Amazon, they're trying to get me to join up for a couple of months um, and try it out. So definitely give this one a try, especially if you know you shop a lot on Amazon. Um, they are kind of second to Netflix when it comes to original programming. Um, definitely nobody matches up to Netflix at all when it comes to original programming, but they, they come in second, I would say. Um, so they're kind of a hybrid. They have a lot of on-demand stuff which is included with the membership, like Netflix, where you buy the membership, the 119 a year or the $13 a month, and you have access to a, a whole lot of you know older TV shows, older movies that are included with that membership. But they also have the option of either renting or buying current season shows kind of a la carte. You just kind of buy whatever it is you want. So if you just want a season of this one show and you can't find it on any of your streaming packages, you can get it from Amazon and just buy that one show. Or you can rent a movie. Um, if there's a new release movie coming out, you can pay that you know three, four dollars to rent it and just watch it there. Um, but like I said, they do have a lot of a la carte stuff, but they really do have a large library of movies and TV shows for free. Um, definitely not up to the caliber of Netflix's um, catalog, but it's. I'd say again, it's kind of kind of run second. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff on there for that are included with your membership. You can also have the option to add channels 
like um, HBO, Stars, Hallmark um, included into your Amazon Prime uh, package. And these channels kind of range from, you know, either from $4 a month to $15 a month, depending upon the um, show that you watch. I always like to mention Hallmark whenever I can get the chance because um, I just, whenever I teach this class, people ask me about Hallmark. And this is one of the options where you can watch your Hallmark channel programming um, without that cable television subscription. Uh, there are also, you know, all kinds of other benefits that are included with Prime. Um, obviously, the two-day shipping is uh, the biggest one. But they also have a lot of um, music, magazines that you can uh, have access to as part of your uh, membership. And they also have free uh, cloud storage um, as well for, you know, if you want to free up some room on your computer um, and save anything to their cloud, um, that's available along with your membership. All right. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about Disney+. Plus. Um, this is one of the, I say newer, but it's been about a year since they debuted. But it's um, very popular for being such a new one. Uh, they have a couple of different options. There's a $7 a month option, or you can do the um, year subscription um, for uh, 70 And this includes, uh, you know, the Disney catalog, Pixar, Star Wars, also Fox, and National Geographic. Um, they also have a $13 a month bundle, which includes uh, Disney+, Plus, ESPN+, Plus if you're a sports fan, as well as that basic um, ad-supported version of Hulu. So that, I mean, that right there is an excellent deal, especially if you're a sports fan. Um, I, don't, I don't think you can really beat that package right there. All right. Uh, you might go, wow, that price is pretty inexpensive. Um, I see that price going up over the years pretty quickly. Right now, um, a lot of Disney's programming is tied up with other streaming services. So they, you know, they've made a contract with Netflix or Prime or you know whatever, all these different places to hold their stuff before they started this. And so their shows are, and movies are still tied up in other things. But as the years go by and those contracts run out, more and more stuff is going to be coming back to Disney+. Plus. And that price should go up over the years. Oh, like I just said that part. All right. Next up, we have Sling TV. Sling TV is a um, basically an alternative to your cable subscription. It's live cable television with no contract. Um, the most basic of their packages runs at $30 a month, which comes um, with 32 channels. Um, again, they have live streaming, but they also have a little bit of on-demand stuff, but you're not getting into Sling TV for the on-demand programming. This is all about being able to watch your cable television live, like you do now with Comcast or at and whoever you have, but again, without that contract. All right, a uh, small bundle of popular cable channels. The smallest is actually 32. I need to update that slide like I did at the top. Um, it's 32 channels. Now, a couple of important things to note. There are um, no local channels with the basic package. Now, if you have an antenna, that's not a big deal. But if you don't have the antenna, then you're not going to be able to get your local NBC, ABC, Fox, CBS kind of channels. You're only going to be able to get those cable, cable channels like ESPN, T TNT, History Channel, AMC. Um, even as you get more into the expensive Sling TV options, um, you only have two of the local channels that are available. So if local programming is important to you, um, then I would, and you want Sling TV, then I would recommend getting an antenna because that's the only way you're going to get these local channels. All right, and it will get you some uh, cable sports content. Um, and that's a big thing for people, um, especially years ago. They did not want to cut the cable cord because they needed their sports. They needed their ESPNs. But now with these services like Sling TV or the Hulu options we talked about a little bit before, you can get these sports um, options now. I also have a $5 um, DVR functionality. So if you want to be able to you know, record um, live TV and save it for later, um, you just have to pay $5 more a month for that option.
Um, AT&T TV Now. I like to talk about this one, especially because a lot of people have AT&T for their, um, their TV service now. And they're going to try and sell you on this um, when you, uh, you know, you cut the cord with them. When you say, I, I don't, I, you know, I'm done with the AT&T. They're going to try to sell you on this. I can tell you from personal experience. So I like to talk about this um, very quickly. Um, 40 to $70 a month, um, you can stream live TV. Um, again, it's the same thing as uh, Sling TV, live streaming, um, just like your cable television subscription. Um, as well as a little bit of on demand, but again, that is not their strong suit. More than 45 channels, which, you know, sounds like a lot of channels. It also includes HBO with their basic um, package, which seems like a really great deal too, right? But it also has the most number of missing channels. Um, you know, the price might sound pretty good, the number of channels HBO might sound pretty good too. But when you're missing channels that are so popular, like A&E, AMC, BBC America, you're missing those channels in this thing. Um, that is why it's usually a, a hard no <laughs> for most people. But I do like to mention it because you will, you will hear a lot about it and they will try to sell you on it if you're trying to, um, you know, end your contract with AT&T. And again, they provide limited DVR functionality as well um, if you want to be able to record um, live TV. YouTube TV, um, this is another heavy hitter. It's definitely on the more expensive side. $65 a month, which, you know, you're right up there with normal cable prices right now. Um, but again, you got to keep in mind, you don't have that contract. And is ever a point that you do not want to be with YouTube TV, you don't have to worry about, oh, well, if I cancel YouTube TV, I'm going to have to pay some sort of penalty to end it right now, or I have to wait until, I don't know, November to be able to end my contract. You can just end it anytime you want. So you know, just keep that in mind as we continue to talk about these um, live streaming options. You are not tied to a contract. All right, right now, um, YouTube TV is in limited markets, but we are um, luckily one of them. Um, 50 stick, ugh, sorry, 56 channels, um, and they have the most number of top channels um, that people consider the top channels. We're talking about your AMCs, A&Es, BBC Americas, TNT, the, the big heavy hitters of your cable um, channels are included in this, as well as all of your local channels. So you can see why the price is a little bit bigger than the other ones because you are getting a lot of good content a lot of good content but again you're not tied to a contract um, and included in that you can have three streams playing this at once so you can share this with your neighbor you can share it with a family member and all three of you can be watching YouTube TV at the exact same time all cons all under that $65 a month um, so if that you know when you consider that you share if you could share that price with other people, that's that's an exceptionally good deal. Uh, provides free uh, DVR functionality as well. So uh, I, I like YouTube TV a lot, even though the price is high. Keep in mind, no contract. You can share it with a lot of people. All right, uh, Filio. Um, I like to include this one. It's uh, twenty dollars a month, just because it's so inexpensive. Um, live streaming as well as on demand. Um, they have 50 plus channels. Now, a uh, couple of important points uh, to talk about with Filio. I, I do like this. I don't have it myself, but I can see it would fit a lot of people's lifestyles. Um, if you do not like sports, Filio is for you. Um, sports are one of the most expensive things that um, are included with any type of uh, TV viewing, which is what a lot of the times. That's why your cable television subscription is so high. That's why some of these other streaming services prices might seem a little bit high is because they include those sports programmings. Filio keeps it low by eliminating that sports thing. So if you are not into ESPN and that type of thing, if you get Filio, uh, you don't have to worry about that. It also includes the Hallmark Channel, which again, I like to mention that as much as possible because that's very important to a lot of people. And it also includes free DVR functionality. 
Voodoo. Um, I do like to include Voodoo because it's important to remember that not everything that you want to watch is going to be on the um, subscriptions you have. And there might be a show that opens up that you hear about that you want to be a part of, but you don't want to pay for whatever it's on. You don't want to pay for, you know, you have to get Sling TV or you have to get whatever it is. You don't want to get those things, but you just want to watch that one thing. Voodoo is a good choice. Voodoo um, especially is a great option if you aren't an Amazon Prime member. Um, there's no subscription fee for Voodoo because the way Voodoo wants is basically like a well, like a blockbuster, I guess, um, a digital blockbuster because you just pay for what you want. Um, so you can you know rent movies, TV shows, and you just pay for them a la carte. So it's again, it's not like it's any skin off your nose having a you know an account with Voodoo because you're not paying any kind of subscription fee, but you have the option to go in there and look at their catalog and see, oh, I'd, I'd like to watch that movie, and it's only $3. I'll, you know, I'll take a look. Um, I probably just need to take this slide off. Upload DVDs for a small free. Um, if that's something you're interested in, that is an option they have with Vudu. But I don't know a lot of people who do it. Um, other options, again, you, know, you might have a TV show that, or a movie that you want to watch that isn't included on your streaming service. And you can um, you know, buy those a la carte. You do not have to you know, go get a subscription to whatever because you want to watch that show. You can get them through an avenue like Vudu. You can get them through iTunes, Google Play, or Amazon. And just buy that one thing. Um, HBO Stars, um, ESPN, Fox News, Hallmark Channel, they all offer their own streaming apps as well. So, you know, if there's a very niche thing that you want to be a part of, um, you can just get a streaming service that gives that. Like, like I said, Hallmark Channel is such a popular one. I think it's only $7 a month for the Hallmark Channel app. We're able to watch the Hallmark Channel programming. Um, just that. All right, next we're going to come to streaming devices. So now that you have all your subscriptions, how are you going to get those subscriptions onto your TV? And that's where the uh, devices come into play. All right. Um, smart TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, um, gaming devices, um, Apple TV, Google Chromecast. These are all um, options that we're going to be talking about. First off, we're going to talk about uh, a smart TV. A smart TV is, you know, just looks like a regular TV, except it already has all the apps pre-programmed into it. You do not need a separate device when you have a smart TV. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind when you um, are in the market for a streaming device. If you already have a TV that works and you like it, there's no reason you do not need to buy a smart TV in order to access Netflix, in order to access Hulu. You do not need it. Um, so don't go springing for a whole new TV because you know you want to start this cord cutting journey. Um, there's a lot less expensive options. But if you have a smart TV already, stick with it. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, just a lot of people get this misconception that they need a smart TV. You do not need a smart TV as long as your TV has you know the proper connections and HDMI port, which most modern TVs, all modern TVs are going to have. You're going to be fine with one of these um, little boxes. But again, if you have that smart TV, keep it. Be happy you got it already set up for yourself. Roku. Roku is, um, if Netflix is the streaming service uh, app that was kind of the founder of streaming, Roku is the device. Um, they usually start at about $30. They're the pioneers of the streaming business. Um, they are the most friendly to all streaming apps. Um, now, this used to be a very different conversation when I taught this class last year um, and years past. Um, some of the other devices are owned by bigger companies. And the bad thing about big companies is they get in fights with one another. So um, you might have the Google Chromecast device, and they wouldn't be able to have, what was it, Amazon Prime on Google Chromecast, you couldn't play Amazon Prime. Or um, you had the uh, Amazon Fire 
and you weren't able to play YouTube because the companies didn't like each other. And even though that's all fixed right now, um, Roku never had these problems. Roku is cool with everybody, um, and that's why I like them. Um, they're not going to usually get in any kind of fights with these. They're going to offer the, you know, the streaming apps that you're looking for on their device. Um, they have the most channels offered, um, including the Roku channel, which is something you get just for having a Roku, which is a great source of free content with no subscription. You just got to own the Ro Roku. Now, we're not talking about the latest and greatest TV and movies. We're talking about some older stuff, but there's, there's some good gems in that um, catalog they have there, and it comes with the Roku device. Uh, Amazon Fire. Uh, most of these um, started about $40. Um, right now, they do offer all the major streaming options. Uh, their interface and everything is very similar to Roku, but it is a little bit more confusing. Um, that's really, there's not a huge difference between the Amazon Fire and Roku at this point. Um, I, I don't have an Amazon Fire, so I, during my research, I tried to find what's the, what's the real difference between an Amazon Fire and a uh, Roku, and there's really not. Um, it's just the box. You plug it up to your TV. You have a controller, and you're going. But uh, the only the only real difference I can find is they have a little bit more of a confusing interface with the um, Amazon Fire. While Roku is set up, when you turn on Roku onto your TV, it's basically shows a list of all the uh, streaming apps that you have. Um, while the Amazon Fire, they will have, you know, the streaming apps listed there, but they can also have some other things cluttering that interface, which can make it a little bit more confusing to navigate through. Um, but again, that's not a huge difference, um, so I wouldn't sweat that too much. If Amazon Fire is the direction you want to go with, I'd go with Amazon Fire. Um, Apple TV. Um, this is a popular one, but extremely expensive. Uh, they started $149 and up. Um, so, like I said, it's very expensive compared to anything else you're going to be getting. But then again, if you're an Apple person, you're used to, to, to paying a little bit extra uh, for the Apple experience. Um, they offer all the major streaming apps right now. They have the fastest interface. Um, a lot of the times when you're with a Roku or a I've heard of even with Amazon Fire. When you're um, using the the controller, there can be a little bit of a lag when you're pushing the button to when you see it actually, you know, get to the screen. Now it's not like a huge a huge lag, but um, you can tell the difference because my mother has a, a Apple TV, and it just runs a lot smoother. Um, also, um, the voice controlled remote comes standard. Um, when you're not using a voice-controlled remote, it can be a little bit annoying. Um, these remotes don't come with like an alphabet set of keys. They usually just have, you know, like arrows to navigate. So if you're wanting to search something, you'll see basically on the screen, it will pop up a big keyboard. And you'll use the arrows to navigate around the keyboard to um, search whatever it is you're wanting to search, which can be time-consuming. Uh, go back to Breaking Bad. If I'm, you know, searching on my Roku for Breaking Bad, and I have just a standard remote, you know, you have to navigate all the way to the B with your arrows, hit OK, and then navigate all the way to the R, then hit OK, then navigate all the way to the E, then hit OK. Um, the voice-controlled remotes are very handy. Um, I would definitely recommend. And, and you know, Roku's the more expensive Roku's, um, the Amazon Fire's. You can't have voice-controlled um, options the more expensive ones you get. So, you know, um, that's something to keep in mind. I mean, it's not – it wasn't enough for me to, uh, to buy the more expensive option, but that's just because I'm cheap. Um, you know, if you want that more convenience of the voice-controlled remote where you can just say into the remote, Breaking Bad, and it will pull up Breaking Bad right then. You don't have to go through all that uh, complicated keyboard stuff. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, another cool thing, again, if you're an Apple person, um, you should know that all Apple devices, your iPhone, MacBooks, iPads, um, and Apple TV, all work seamlessly together. Um, AirPlay, which is where you can 
easily send what is on one device to another device um, works right along with Apple TV. Um, it's a good way you can, you know, if you have a, uh, you know, a set of pictures that you want on your iPhone, if you have a video that you want to, you have on your iPhone, you don't want to watch it on your phone, you want to show it to your guests in your house. And when we can have guests in our house again, I guess, after COVID. Um, but if you want to show it to them, you can seamlessly pop it from your phone onto the Apple TV so you can show the pictures, the videos on the TV. And lastly, we're going to talk about a Google Chromecast. It runs a little bit differently than these other devices. These other devices um, are kind of what you're used to um, with your cable. They are a box, it plugs up to your TV, and you have a remote, and that's how you control it. The Chromecast works a little bit differently. There is no remote for Chromecast. So uh, they start at $35 a month. Um, I'd probably need to update this slide here where it says huge in popularity due to small price just because kind of they've all kind of balanced out the price right now. Um, so it's not really that much more inexpensive or not really any more expensive than some of the cheaper options anymore. But um, basically, like I said, the phone or your computer acts as the remote. So um, what you do in this case is on your phone, you would download Netflix, you would download the app for Hulu, you would download whatever streaming apps that you have a subscription to. And it's going to give you the option to push the um, video from your phone or your laptop or your iPad to the TV. And the way this works is I'll show you real fast is we'll go to YouTube. So I got one of our exercise videos pulled up from yesterday. And I pulled it up on YouTube, but this is the same exact thing on Netflix, same exact thing on Hulu. Um, we have our video here. And you'll notice here at the bottom, you have this little um, symbol right here. And it's a little box with a couple of um, curved lines here in the corner. And like I said, that'll show up on your phone. It shows up on um, your iPad. It shows up on anything with video. And you click on that. And it's what it's going to do is it's going to show you all the places that you can um, push this video to, all the devices. So you just choose your device. You'll be able to name your device through the Chromecast, like this one's Family Room TV and you're able to push it, the video will go from here to your TV. And, um, you know, it's a little bit more of a tech-savvy option. It's a little bit different than what people are used to. But it's really handy. Um, I don't find it as handy when it comes to uh, playing things off of the phone, when it comes to playing things off your iPad. But if you, you know, you use a computer a lot, or you watch a lot of YouTube, um, playing stuff from your computer to your TV couldn't be easier with a um, Google Chromecast. But again, it's a more of a tech-savvy option. It's completely different than how you think of TV now. Like I said, you think of TV now as a remote control and a box and a TV. But with this, we eliminate the remote control and you do it all through a separate device. All right. So in conclusion, is cord cutting the right option for you? All right, do you want to save money? Of course we all do, but, you know, are you really going to save money? It depends upon, you know, are you willing to do your research? Are you willing to look into what shows you want to watch? What shows are you willing not to watch? Um, you have to th you think a lot about it. Do you have access to high-speed internet at home? I think most people do, but some people don't. Um, but you're going to need that high-speed internet for most streaming options, other than the antenna. Um, are you willing to wait a few days for your favorite shows? You have to ask yourself that, because if you're not, then either you need to stick with cable, or you need to go with one of the streaming options that allow for live viewing, which is going to be a little bit more expensive than just a Netflix. Um, how much content are you willing to pay for? And again, how much content are you willing to live without? Um, you know, it's, it's a hard thing going from cable where you have everything. You might not watch it, but it's kind of nice having it 
just in case you need it. It's kind of like a safety net. Um, so it's kind of like you're removing the safety net and it's all dependent upon you to get this content, to find it. And um, actually speaking of that, I will say, if you are curious, the easiest way to search for where to find things is just to go to Google. So um, I keep going back to Breaking Bad. Just I usually get a TV show stuck in my head when I teach this class. So Breaking Bad. So what you want to do, type in Breaking Bad or whatever it is you want to watch. It can be a movie. It can be a TV show. So type in that. Then hit sh just type in streaming. And Google knows what you're doing. So what Google's going to do is show you right up here at the top all the different options of watching Breaking Bad through a streaming service. So we can see here, Netflix, it's included with the subscription. Um, with just regular YouTube, you can rent it $1.99 an episode. Same thing with Google Play, same thing with Vudu, iTunes. Um, Amazon Prime is a little bit more expensive to um, rent at $3.99. But you can do that with anything. Um, let's see, Rear Window. That's a movie. So um, we can see all the options for watching um, Rear Window here. And like I said, you can do that with anything. Just type in whatever it is you're interested in watching, whatever show is popular with you. Go to Google and you know experiment and see what you know what streaming services are offering most of the shows that you watch. But uh, that is really it for me. Um, I do want to uh, say, if you have any questions, I know this is kind of hard virtually, so it's hard to ask questions. Um, please do not re hesitate to reach out to me. I'm going to give you two different options. Jonathan.Barfield at CobbCounty.org. Um, feel free to shoot me an email. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Or um, you can also give me a call, 770-528-8201. Uh, and I'd you know, be happy to talk with you a little bit more in depth um, with any questions you have. But other than that, thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.